gitlab.com. We're just going to walk through today on how to set up SAML and Skim uh, for Okta. So we recently released the Skim application for Okta. Uh, so I thought I'd finally do a demo video on how to set up both SAML and Skim for gitlab.com. So uh, I recommend reading this doc page a bit more in detail just because there is a lot of information and quite a bit can affect how you want to configure it. Uh, what I'm going to do today is walk through kind of what we would consider the officially supported, this is what our documentation says, uh, following it to the letter, everything should work. Uh, and this is kind of what we would be used to seeing. So uh, in terms of just docs reference, I'm going to jump straight to the Okta setup notes. Um, we don't walk you through, although we do link you to the Okta uh, documentation, we don't actually have any screenshots or anything like that uh, in terms of how it's set up. Uh, we do have some screenshots for reference in our troubleshooting section, uh, but not as part of our official documentation, just because Okta can change things at any point without, knowing, uh, without us knowing. So to start, um, we're just going to go into Okta, um, and I'm just going to add an application here, and then I'm going to create a new app. So for OctaSaml, uh, we don't actually have an app yet. Uh, so our developers are working on combining uh, both SAML and Skim into a single app. But until then, uh, you have to set up SAML as a custom app, and then you have the Skim app, uh, which I'll show you is a gallery application. So we're going to create a web SAML 2.0. I'm just going to call it GitLab support test. Uh, you know, of course, you can always uh, optionally change the icon. I definitely recommend grabbing the GitLab logo uh, for that. And this is where, you know, it's fairly straightforward. What we've done in our Okta notes is kind of tell you what we call it in GitLab and what field it kind of goes into. So for the single sign-on URL, we want the ACS URL from GitLab. So here's my GitLab group. And so I'm going to grab my ACS URL. Just quickly paste that in there. And then as per docs for the audience URI, you want the identifier. All right, great. Uh, our notes also say to just make sure that this option is checked off, which by default it is. Uh, for name ID format, again, we're just gonna refer to its docs here. Um, so, we recommend that you set it to persistent. And then for the application username, it's actually going to be custom. Now what we do is we are going to actually grab the internal ID that Okta provides to users. So it's very common for SAML providers where you set up email, unfortunately at this time, because of the way that uh, our, or the GitLab group or gitlab.com specifically SAML is implemented, having email address is not really the best idea for the name ID because people's emails can change and then it can actually break uh, someone's login path to GitLab. So that's actually all we have to do for the SAML setup. Uh, however, if you are planning to use group managed accounts, uh, which there's you know a whole section on what that means and what that does, so please check it out if you're interested in that. Um, but what we need to do if you are going to use 
uh, grid radish to count is to set up the assertions. So basically what we need is we need to say email is going to be obviously the user's email. And then we need, uh, I tend to prefer the uh, all lowercase, no underscore version. Uh, any of these three will work. So then we use first name for user's first name and last name for user's last name. Uh, finally, we have name, which is supposed to be the full name. Now, Octo does not have this as a dropdown, uh, but what you can do is you can actually just combine first name and last name. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to concatenate them. And uh, that's everything for the assertions. So then what we can do is we can preview the SAML assertion uh, if you want. Uh, what you're always looking for is that the name ID has a, a subject confirmation as well. And you want to make sure that it's a subject name ID and not just a name ID attribute statement. So that's good. Um, again, this is fairly straightforward in Okta, so you know you can check it, but you shouldn't need to. Now, because I'm using Okta Preview, it is asking me these other questions. I'm just going to say that this is an internal app that I'm testing. That's fine. Okay, and then here, what we want to do is view the sub instructions because this is going to give me what I need to put into GitLab. So then our single sign on URL here goes into exactly the same name. So I'm going to turn this on. And then the other thing that we actually need is the certificate. Now, Octo does not provide this in the format that uh, we need in GitLab, so I'm just going to download the certificate and then I'm going to open it. And I'm just going to view it. And in the certificate details, I can then see the fingerprints. And uh, you'll notice that in our fingerprint, we specifically say what you want is the SHA-1 fingerprint for the certificate. Uh, so I'm going to copy that and just paste it into here. Uh, and then I'm just going to save the changes. So now to verify that I've set this all up correctly, what I can do is click on verify SAML configuration. Oh, right. Okay. Well, you know, the good reminder that yes, there's a reason why I can't do this. And that is because of course I need to assign myself to the app. Um, I'm just going to quickly add myself. Okay, save and go back. And let me just try that again. Okay, great. Uh, so now you can see that it's telling me it's a valid SAML response. The name ID is this bunch of numbers and letters. Um, and if you notice that matches what Octa prompted me would be the username uh, for this app uh, when I was adding myself. And again, you can just see the SAML response that you get. Okay, so great, we've set up SAML. Um, if you wanna know what these other options do, please again, take a look at our docs. Um, as it says, basically enforce SAML means, uh, SSO only means that 
you can't log in directly to GitLab to get access. You have to uh, actually log in through SAML to get access to the group. Uh, but again, more details in our docs. So now that we have SAML set up, uh, we're going to set up Skim. So the Skim page um, doesn't actually have a ton of information uh, except for the GitLab configuration uh, in terms of what's going on or general information. Uh, the Okta configuration steps um, are specific to Okta and most of our configuration for Skim right now is provider uh, specific. So uh, interestingly, because Skim is a gallery application, uh, it's actually even easier than setting up SAML because you don't have to uh, kind of configure anything yourself. So we're just going to go ahead and search for GitLab here. And then we want to add that. And then again, I'm just going to call it support test. And then we're going to check these off. Um, and again, I'm just following the um, instructions here. Um, as it says, because SAML and Skim right now are added separately, you don't actually want the Skim app to show to your users because you don't want them clicking on that. Uh, to log in to GitLab with SAML, they just want to be clicking on the SAML app. So we're going to click done here. Okay. And then we're going to configure API integration. So all you have to do is get to this point uh, and then in the skim token area. Now, if you have never generated the skim token, it'll just have a button to generate it. Um, so what I'm going to do actually right now is just reset it so that you kind of see what it looks like. So we're just going to copy both of these over to Okta. So this is the base URL. And here is the token. We're going to hit save. Okay. And let's just quickly double check that. Uh, all right. One more thing that we need to do is then edit and enable both create users and deactivate users. Hit save. Great. Uh, and then what we're going to do is uh, just assign people. So uh, I could at this point assign myself. Um, and uh, in this case, Though, honestly, it's not going to do a lot because I'm already in the system. And uh, I already have a user on GitLab.com. So it's not going to create a new user for me. Um, but what I can do is then show you what it looks like under my apps. Okay. So you can see that I have the original SAML app in here. Um, again, because we made sure that the skim app doesn't show for the user, we're not going to see it here. And so if I click on, yeah. so I, the first time someone tries to sign in, they will always get this screen. They just need to authorize the app and then they'll get access to the app. Um, now, again, because I already have access to it, what it's actually doing in my case is simply tying my SAML identity. And you'll notice that anyone who has their SAML identity has their SAML badge. These other users, uh, my colleagues who are in this group have not signed in through SAML, so don't have that badge. And then just one more thing here is the list of members and then their identity. So you can always double check 
what is the name ID associated to the user? And you can always compare that to the user information you have in your identity provider. So that's it. That's all we need to do in order to set up SAML and Skim. Um, and again, for Skim, what it's supposed to do is create the user um, if the user doesn't already exist in GitLab. Um, now, just a couple of, you know, kind of troubleshooting. Uh, some of these are very specific to Azure, but actually our general SAML troubleshooting has a lot of information about like, okay, well, what if you get this error message to say like the user has already been taken or the email has already been taken? Email has already been taken is actually um, expected in many cases because that user already has an account on gitlab.com. So they already have an account on gitlab.com. When it tries to create a user, it can't. Um, so this is a pretty common error and actually nothing necessarily to worry about. Um, the user just has to follow our documentation. Uh, sorry, in here. Uh, to actually just tie their GitLab.com account to the identity provider. I also mentioned that there are screenshots and there are. So under verifying configuration, uh, what we again have are screenshots that we use as uh, reference. And then for Okta, the SAML ones uh, are there. Um, again, skim. Uh, has was just added, so it's not even there yet. Um, but again, it's it, it's so straightforward with the gallery app uh, that it's it doesn't quite have the same complexity uh, as the custom app setup. All right, well, that's it. I hope uh, that was easy enough to follow. And as always, if you are having any issues setting this up, please uh, write into support, and we'll do our best to help.